So glad you guys are here. To, and by the way, anybody who's feeling like a child is welcome to come up too. Parents, well, parents may or may not want to come up, but uh, come on up, have a sit down on the floor, wherever you'd like. Young, old, alike, everybody's welcome. Come on up. So glad you guys are here. So glad you we made it. It's finally Christmas. We were waiting for this for a long time. It's a long time. Uh, we've been talking about Christmas here, and if you're just joining us this evening, I'm really glad that you're here um, to celebrate uh, Christmas. It's, of course, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day tomorrow, uh, so I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And leading up to tonight, we've been in a season in the church called Advent, and Advent gets us ready for tonight, gets us ready for Christmas. Uh, and we need that time to get ready because it's such a big deal. We started out talking about how Christmas is about Santa and it's about the presents and it's about the food and the, and the company that comes over and visits or the trips that we take to go visit people and all that. But at its heart, at the, at the foundation of it all, is the birth of Jesus Christ. That's why we have Christmas, because of the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ was God becoming human, just like one of us, just like one of us. And to show us the way of love in the world. That's why God came into the world in Jesus Christ, to show us the way of love in the world. And so to get ready for this, we've been building this manger scene here over the past four Sundays uh, to help us remember how that first Christmas happened and who was there and why they were there. Uh, and this morning we added some characters and I, and I was asked, uh, why aren't we adding Jesus? And it wasn't Christmas yet. So I took a little grief for that, but you guys are here to, to see that happen. We're going to add Jesus tonight, but we had to get through a lot of people before we got to Jesus. There were a lot of people involved in this, this scene on that first Christmas. So we talked about how, first we just have, we have the, the stable uh, in, in Bethlehem where uh, Jesus uh, was born. Uh, stable is, of course, for animals, right? So we added the animals, the, the uh, cows and the and the goats and the sheep there, uh, to remind us that God chose to be born in a place like this. Of all the places God could have been born in the world, God chose to be born in a stable in Bethlehem, which is an out-of-the-way place, uh, to, to remind us that God comes into our lives when we're feeling lost, where we don't have a home, maybe, where we don't feel right, where we're hurting, uh, where we can find any place that we can get to. God enters those tough times in our lives in a special way. And then we added the uh, angel, uh, which reminds us that any place, even a stable, can be a holy place. Not just the sanctuary, not just churches, but any place where God is, which is everywhere, can be a holy place. Wherever you walk can be holy ground when you recognize that God is there with you. And God is there with you all the time. Then we added Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph here, who were ordinary people, ordinary working people. But they were also very faithful people. They trusted God in a special way, Mary especially, uh, to bring about this miracle of God coming into the world in Jesus Christ. 
Uh, so they came to Bethlehem. And the reason they ended up in the stable instead of someplace uh, else uh, is because it was a very crowded place in Bethlehem and there was no room for them anywhere else. Um, and God also comes into those places where we think there's no room for God, but God is there too. So we got Mary and Joseph. And then this morning we added the uh, shepherds uh, to remind us I think we're missing a shepherd. Oh no, he's over here. Okay. Um, there were, we don't know how many shepherds were there, but it's a great story. Uh, you know, it's kind of, sometimes if you're reading the Bible, it seems a little hard to read, but it's a great story, especially about the shepherds. We're going to hear about that tonight uh, with the Bible story. But it was a great story. They were out in the field watching their sheep, and suddenly these angels showed up. And maybe this one flew out there from the sable, and a bunch of angels came, and they started singing and praising God and telling the shepherds to go into Bethlehem and find this new baby that is God in human form. And so off they go. And they came to uh, Bethlehem. And finally, they found the stable and they found uh, Mary and Joseph there too. So now we got, <laughs> you're so anxious to put this one on. Uh, we got the baby Jesus to put in there. Now, this is the most important uh, addition to the manger scene or the stable uh, because this is Jesus coming to us born tonight, again, to remind us that God is not just up there somewhere in heaven. God's right down here with us too uh, and lives in our hearts and in our world uh, to bring about God's love. Jesus um, uh, uh, was, was born here in, uh, in the stable and they laid him in a manger. Now, a manger is where uh, it, they put hay for animals to eat, but it was, it, was, it was up off the floor and it was a safe place for him. And so we're going to add add, uh, add uh, um, Jesus. Now, I want to make sure somebody who hasn't added something to the stable gets a chance to do that. Would you like to do that? Would, do you want to add Jesus to the stable? No, okay. Okay, that's okay. You don't have to do it. I just thought it'd be a big deal to do it. Okay. Anybody want to do it? No, 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 no. Go for it. Anywhere you want. That's probably the best place, right in front of Mary and Joseph. Yeah, that's great. So we've added Jesus now to the stable. His birth into this world brings us the reality of God's love, and we're supposed to live by that love, right? To shine God's light and God's love into some of the darkest places in the world and, uh, and into people's lives who are going through a difficult time. Um, too. It may be, and, God, and to remember that God's with us when we're going through a tough time too. We're never, ever, you are never alone in this life, in this world. God is with you all the time, especially uh, if you're unsure. God's right there beside you, and this whole scene, this whole story is to remind you of that. You can never be separated from God and God's love. All right. Now, somebody also this morning pointed out, we're missing the wise men. And that's intentional because they came a little bit later and their arrival was such a big deal, it was so special that they get their own day. And that's called Epiphany, which is in two weeks. Uh, so we're going to leave this up, this manger scene up, and then we're going to add them uh, in a couple of weeks and tell, talk about why, they're, why they came and how they came and uh, how they can teach us more about God and God's love. All right? <laughs>
seated. You sound great tonight. It really feels like Christmas with your singing tonight, so thank you for that. Um, you are invited at this time uh, to consider your offering, your Christmas offering to our church. Uh, we have many ministries here in the church to uh, uplift the light of Christmas, the goodness of Christmas, uh, the hope and justice and love of God in the world, uh, and your offering uh, makes that possible through uh, the many ministries we undertake. Uh, one of the things that's left over from uh, our time in the pandemic is that we don't plan, we continue to not pass an offering plate. So we take the offering in a contactless way still. So at the exits to the uh, narthex, you will find offering plates. Uh, so uh, as you leave today, you're welcome to place an offering there. Also, um, uh, many of you have brought um, uh, food to donate to the food pantry, uh, to the two food pantries in Melrose, as uh, your offering uh, this evening. That was something we've been encouraging throughout the season of Advent. Uh, so we really thank those who brought that, and I've been asked to share a blessing over uh, that food. So let's be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to bless the food that is brought to our church during this Advent season, and especially tonight, O oh God. Bless it as it makes its way to the food pantries here in Melrose and to those who need it most. May this food be an expression of your love made active in the world through the spirit of Christmas, through the spirit of Jesus Christ alive in us and through our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now also, uh, the offering tonight uh, is a straight mission offering. Uh, it does go to the two food pantries in Melrose, as well as uh, Bread of Life uh, Food Ministry in Malden, which uh, our church is a strong participant in. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it, will, it will really strengthen those ministries uh, within our church uh, tonight. Uh, so if you, just to make you aware uh, of that mission, the mission component to the offering uh, this evening. So as we sing uh, the doxology now, I do invite you to consider those that giving, uh, which is now uh, invited.
And I invite you to hear the Christmas story as recounted in the Gospel of Luke, the beginning of the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now in that same region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and on earth peace to God's people on earth. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Here ends our scripture lessons for this evening. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? Compassionate Creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Wow! It has finally, finally arrived. Christmas Eve. Our Advent journey is over. And more importantly for most people, the shopping is over. You've got what you've got at this point. If you didn't get that air fryer for Aunt May or whoever, you're out of luck. You got what you got at this point. The shopping is over. The decorating is over. The inviting is over. Christmas is finally here. This whole time of year is joyful, but it's also very exhausting, isn't it? Why is there so much hype around Christmas? We shop and we cook and we prepare and we decorate all to have the best Christmas ever. And we do that not realizing that there is no improving on the first one. But that's what we try and do. That's what the world tries to do. And it makes sense that the world would try to improve on that first Christmas, because from the world's perspective, everything about that first Christmas was just wrong. I mean, think about it. I mean, first off, it was the wrong gift. Because if you were to ask people, most people, if you were to ask them, what do you want for Christmas? I'd be hard-pressed to have you come up with anybody who would say, I want God to enter human history. I want God to step out of heaven and come and become one of us to live among us. Even the most devout people probably wouldn't wish for that. Why? Because it's too frightening. I mean, think about it. God in the flesh, wandering around, messing in our business, expecting a relationship? Yeah, no thanks. As long as we got God in heaven as some distant figure that we don't have to deal with, 
that's okay. But if God becomes one of us, a real person like the rest of us, then suddenly God's real and not some theological head game. And if God is real, then God's hopes are real and God's call to us is real too. And who would ask for that? Because it's so much easier without that. So you can see why, according to the world standards, it was a wrong gift. And besides that, this gift came at the wrong time. Because if God were going to do it all over again, now would be a much better time for God to get the word out. Look at the global communication that we have today. Communication back then, it was a, it was a town crier or an announcement in the local synagogue at best. That was it. But if Jesus had been born today, ah, we could live stream the whole thing. We could at least text message everybody we know or send out a MailChimp email blast with a link to what's going on in Bethlehem. We could have live reports from the manger, press conferences with the, with the uh, shepherds and the wise men. Of course, there'd be those websites that would always say, it's aliens, it's aliens. But we'd ignore them like we always do. Oh, and with the wise men, we could have close-ups of these gifts with useful links about what the heck frankincense is. And myrrh, what's that? And maybe some pop-ups with the value of gold on the world market. We'd see Jesus' first smile. We'd see him take his first steps and his first giggle. And we'd know what happened to him between the birth and that trip to the temple at age 12. And we could find out just what he did for the next 18 years before he started his public ministry. And think of Jesus' message. The, the Sermon on the Mount could have been heard by everybody around the entire world, live, with limited commercial interruption. So you can see why, according to the world standards, the gift came at the wrong time. And not only that, this gift came in the wrong package. Jesus as a baby, a baby. God wrapped up in the fragile innocence of an infant. Now that sounds nice, but today, in our supercharged, supersized me world, we can do better than that. We want something or someone bigger. We want a God with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm like the prophets talked about. A God who's ready for a, a, a good brawl at the next Bruins game to set things right. That kind of a God. A turbocharged, beefed up, hard body, no nonsense, take charge, the force be with you. That kind of a God. That's what we want. Not a baby. What kind of a God announces it's coming that way? What kind of a God sets everybody's expectations really high and then comes as an infant who makes us wait until he grows up? We want something or someone who will turn the world upside down now, not 30 years from now. So you can see why, according to the world's standards, the gift came in the wrong package. The wrong gift, the wrong time, the wrong package. And not only that, but this gift came through the wrong people. Joseph was a nobody. Oh, sure, he was a distant relative of David, King David, but probably so was Mary. Probably half the Jews in Israel at that time were related to David in some way. These were ordinary people, everyday people. And that is just wrong. Shouldn't the Son of God, the Savior of the entire world, have come from a more well-established family? a more well-thought-of family, a more well-healed family than that of a carpenter from Nazareth? Think of all the families Jesus could have been born into today that could have prepared him in the best schools and the best synagogues possible. Mary and Joseph were nobodies. Again, according to the world standards, this gift came through the wrong people. And finally, according to the world standards, this gift came to the wrong people. Who do you give Christmas presents to? You give them to family and friends and loved ones, people you care about, people who care about you. Sure, we give gifts to less fortunate people through our acts of charity at this time of year, but we don't normally give gifts to strangers or people 
we think are, who are untrustworthy or who have bad reputations. But that's exactly who God gave the first Christmas gifts to. Take the wise men. They weren't Jews. They were strangers. They may not even all came from the same country. They were foreigners. And yet God told them first. And even lit up the highway for them so they could find their way to Bethlehem by following that star. And then the angel told the shepherds who were watching their sheep in the field. They sound safe enough, right? David was a shepherd. But what we forget is that in the world of that time, faithful Jews were warned by their rabbis against entering six professions, and one of those forbidden professions was being a shepherd. Conscientious Pharisees would never consider doing business with a shepherd. They'd buy wool or milk, but never directly from a shepherd. Shepherds weren't allowed to give testimony in court. Not only that, but shepherds were were not permitted to enter the temple or synagogue. Why? Be, well, for one thing, shepherds were constantly walking where the sheep had been, if you know what I mean. And that made them uh, unclean, religiously unclean. And secondly, shepherds tended their sheep throughout the countryside without paying attention to property lines. So they were constantly trespassing. In other words, they, that led them to people thinking, that they were thieves, that they ran the local black market. Nobody loved shepherds. Shepherds were liars and thieves who would steal you blind. They were dirty and despised. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be shepherds. That's what Willie Nelson would have said if he wrote it today or back then. So according to the world standards, this gift came to the wrong people. That is why we always try to improve on Christmas because we think God got it wrong. That's why tonight is so important. Tonight we unwrap this gift of God and we realize that by God's standards and to our advantage, everything, everything about that first Christmas was just right. Just perfect. God came as an ordinary person, just like us. And that was the perfect gift, given at the right time. I mean, really, look what we would, have, we would do with it today. Instead, God chose a simple time where, like a seed, like a baby, this miracle could grow and bear fruit and not become a circus. And it came in the right package. One of the things that always draws us back to this story is that God loves us so much that God became vulnerable, like one of us, arriving as a baby. And what, what melts the heart more than a baby? We all go a little nuts and making faces and silly sounds and acting like simpletons whenever there's a baby around, right? The gift came in the right package. And God sent this gift through the right people. Because not everybody would have had the faith to listen to God through angels and dreams like Mary and Joseph and then carry out God's plan in such a humble way. And God sent this gift to the right people. Because if the shepherds, with their reputation, and the wise men who weren't even locals, that if they could receive this magnificent gift of God, then what does that mean? It means it's available to us as well. What a confluence of events and time and characters and attributes. The perfect recipe for God's incarnation wrapped up, not in Christmas wrapping paper, but in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So this year, this year, don't try to have the best Christmas ever because it's already been done. Your job is to remember that first Christmas and celebrate God's coming to us. Your job is to unwrap this gift that came as the right gift, at the right time, in the right package, through the right people, to the right people. It really is the best Christmas present ever. And it has your name on it. It has your name on it. 
because it is always and forever for you. Amen.